everyone, it's Rachel and in today's video we have something a little bit different to what I would usually do on my channel. So I know a lot of you have actually seen the video where Jackie or Nerdy Crafter followed one of my pull and play tutorials but she used only the audio to follow it so she had no visuals at all and she had to try and make the creation what I made as close to the original as possible but using only the audio. So the video that she followed of mine was the donut tutorial from the Sophie and Toffee box. So if you haven't already checked out that video or subscribe to Jackie, I'll leave her links down in the description box for you to check out. So in today's video, I thought it'd be really fun if I try following one of her tutorials using only the audio. And what I've done is I've got my laptop here and I got Sarah, my sister, to download one of the videos into an MP3 file so that I have only the audio and none of the visuals. I also actually have no idea what we're making today. Sarah downloaded it and found a tutorial. It was really hard for her to try and find one because Jackie, in her older tutorials particularly, apparently uses a lot of like time lapses and just puts text on the screen rather than saying it. So I think she finally found one that I should be able to follow. So I'm really excited to get started. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you would like more crafty videos from me. So I guess now the only thing to do is to get started. Okay, so this is the current setup at my desk. I've got my main camera filming the clay part of the video and then my phone is over here filming me. I know it kind of looks like I'm really awkward like next to my tripod here but you know you got to do what works so it's fine. Turn both cameras on. Right okay so this now is my first time listening to the audio. <laughs> Intro. Hey guys, this is Jackie, or Nerdy Crafter, mm -hmm. and with summer right around the corner, sometimes summer. it can get a little too hot. And Well, it's summer right now, so I know that feeling. Often, one of the best ways to cool down is with an icy treat. <gasps> and so for this week's tutorial, I decided to make some miniature Nestle drumstick ice creams. <gasps> oh, yay! Okay, that's cute. Okay. But I'm not good at realistic charms. Well, we'll see what happens. I love how these little ice cream cones turned out and the little peanuts, I think the shading on the peanuts actually give them a little more depth. This should and be fun. And also the little drizzle of chocolate on the cone makes it even look more realistic. You can turn these into earrings, a bracelet, a magnet. I've never actually made drumsticks before. For those of you new to my here's what you'll need for this Okay, project. things I need. Tan colored clay, yep. white, dark brown, a lighter tan. You could just take your tan color and mix it with a little bit of white, rounded and pointy tools. A cutter, yellow and brown chalk pastel, two hook earrings, two eye pins, and optionally liquid sculpty if you have any. The first thing we're going to- Okay, let me gather all those things. <laughs> Okay, so here I think I have everything I need. I've got the tan clay, brown clay, white clay, and then lighter tan clay. I'm using Ecru by Primo. Hopefully that's all right. Um, I've got my blade, got my blade, my pointed and round tools, which I'm guessing are a needle tool and some ball tools or dotting tools. My blade. Did I just say that? I don't know. <laughs> got my blade. <laughs> um, I've got my brown and yellow chalk pastel, but I assume that's for like shading like the cone of the drumstick. So I've also got my shading mixture as well as these just in case. And then I've got one eye pin. So instead of making earrings, I think I'll just make um, one drumstick into a charm because I don't actually have my ears pierced. So there's not really, I don't have a reason to make earrings, but I'm going to make it into a charm because that's, that's just what I do. And then of course I've also got my Sculpey Bacon Bond for the liquid clay. So now that we've got everything, let's see what we have to do first. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tan colored clay, flatten it out really thin, and then you're going to take the side of any of your tools. Usually they do have a texture. Roll okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to take the tan colored clay and I guess I'll need my rolling pin and then I'm going to flatten it down into a thin sheet to start off with. All right, so that's what we have for now. And then she said to take one of my tools with a texture on it. Roll it on top. Take your circle cutter. I think I know what she means. I think, let me find it. Right, I found it. Jackie, I think this is what you mean by a textured tool. Hopefully that's what you mean. And then you're going to take the side of any of your tools. Usually they do have a texture. Roll it on top. Roll it on top. Take your circle cutter. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna roll it on top first, I guess like this. So it makes like the waffle cone texture. Perfect. Should probably zoom in so you can like see a little bit, might be helpful. There we go. Mm. My tool had a little bit of clay in it. 
Yeah, okay, well that's gonna have to do. Um, take my circle cookie cutter, which I have here. Did up. Once you have that, you're going to take your dark yellow chalk pastel. Oh, okay, stop. So we're gonna cut it out using our circle cookie cutter. So I'll just press that into there and peel away the excess like that. And just to make sure that it doesn't stick on my bench too much because it's a hot day, I'm gonna lift it up and then I can sit it back down. Once you have that, you're going to take your dark yellow chalk pastel, put it on top, and then you're going to take your brown chalk pastel and also mm -hmm. dust it on top. Make sure you also get the edges with your dark brown. Okay, so I actually got a light brown and a light yellow. So I think we're just shading it pretty much, so I'm gonna need a brush as well. So I'm actually gonna use my mixture that I already have made up and my fluffy brush, but then I'll just make sure that it's darker around the edges. So if I dip that into there and then just go lightly on the top. I feel like I've taken the wrong tan color, maybe for the cone. I should have used a lighter color. Dang it, oh well. Cause this ain't doing much. <laughs> she didn't say that though, did she? She, at the start, she said take the tan color, not the light tan color. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tan colored clay. All right, she did say tan color. All right, so I've gone to go get a darker brown for the edges. So I'm just gonna dust some of that around the edge to make it look cooked, I guess. Whoops, I feel like that might be a bit dark, but we'll roll with it. Once you have that, you're going to fold your circle into a cone. It's a little tricky at first, but I'm sure you'll be able to get it. Hopefully I can do that. So I'm going to, again, try to gently lift it off my work surface and then try and fold it into a cone. I need like a little point and then I can go like this. She's right, it is tricky. Just use the edge of one of my tools to try and like make it a bit rounder. There. Is that kind of, kind of a cone? Well... It is now. And then you're going to cut off the excess on top to make it flat. Okay, I thought that's what she might do. That makes more sense. Alright, so that's what my little cone looks like so far. Make as many of those as you want. And then we're going to... I think just one will be fine. <laughs> and then we're going to bake it for 7 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, okay, so I have to go bake. That is the one thing that Sarah mentioned about this tutorial. There's multiple like baking stages. So I will go bake my cone and then I'll be straight back for the next part. All right, so I just got back from baking my little cone for a few minutes, just so it hardens slightly and we'll keep going. Now in order to make the ice cream, what you're going to do is you're going to take a ball of white clay. Make sure that it's the right size for the cone that you have. Depends, is the clay going inside the cone or on top? Well, I think I've got too much anyway, so we'll make it a little bit smaller. There we go, so maybe like that kind of size. Take your dark brown clay. Yep. And you're going to roll it. Ooh, dark brown clay. Do I need to make that darker? I think I actually might, so it looks more chocolatey. Be right back. Here we go, so I've made a bit of a dark brown now, and hopefully that's all right, so we'll just keep going. It out really, really thin. Wait, what? And then you're going to take your dark brown clay. Which I now have. And you're going to roll it out really, really thin. Once you have it, you're going to wrap it around your white ball. Okay. All right. So I need... All right. So I'll put those to the side for now. Take the brown and then I'm going to roll it out with my rolling pin. Really thin. Really, really thin. As Jackie said. Really, really thin. And I need to make it big enough so that it can wrap around the white ball. Alright, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep that in a ball and then I'm going to cover it most of the way, she said. There's going to be excess. Do I cut off the excess now? Alright, so actually, changed my mind. I'm not going to have the, the clay as a ball. I'm going to make it like a little bit, mm, like a flat cylinder kind of shape. I'm just trying to picture what a drumstick would look like. They're kind of, they're not round, they're like flat on top, aren't they? Yeah? Am I, am I thinking of the right thing? And now we're going to place it in the brown. And then we're going to wrap the brown around it. And I might actually cut off the excess. Yeah, I've got a lot of brown clay. I'm not going to need all of that, am I? 
make sure that it covers at least most of the way. And then you're going to place it on top of your cone. Take your pointy tool and start pushing some of that chocolate onto the cone. We want to make it look as real as possible. Jackie, I love how you made it clear. We want to make it look as real as possible. <laughs> and the one thing I suck at, realistic charms. Right, so here I now have my cone and my chocolate and I'm just going to place that on top like that. Try and make it centered. And then she said that we want to pull the clay down onto the cone. So I'm going to use like a blending tool maybe to try and do that because she said that's what helps make it more realistic. So here's what my little blended cone currently looks like and I did try to make it like look as realistic as possible. Radio, what do we have to do next? Push it on top and then you're going to take your cutter and make a bite mark. So that one depends on your preference, you can make it as big or as tiny as you want. Okay. And then once you have that bite, you're going to take your pointy tool again and make some lines. All right, so we're now making a bite mark in the drumstick and she said it's up to you how you want to do it. So you can make it as big or as small as you would like. I think I want, not like a, mm, I don't know. <laughs> not a huge bite mark, but not a small bite mark. I don't know, a medium bite mark? I guess that's in the middle. Now, because my clay is actually quite warm at the moment because it is a hot day, I'm actually going to go put my little charm in the fridge for like a tiny bit and then I will come back and cut it just so that it's um, easier to cut and like the brown won't scrape into the white clay. Did she also say to put an eye pin in before that? Put a little bit of liquid Sculpey on your eye pin, push it on top. Yes she did. <laughs> Good thing I listen. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm not going to put any of the Sculpey onto my eye pin because I usually super glue it after so I'm just going to put it down in the center like that. And then I'm going to go pop it in the fridge now. So now that it's cooled, I'm just going to try and cut it. And I'm actually going to use my flower shaped cookie cutter to try and make a little bite mark in the front of it. So at this point, we're just making some lines like in the ice cream part, I'm guessing to make it actually have like an ice cream like bitten texture. For the roasted peanuts, you're going to take your lighter tan clay. Okay. Roll it out. In so here's where the lighter tan clay comes in. It's for the peanuts on top. So I've got my lighter tan clay. Roll it out into a thin snake. Now in order to make this look as realistic as possible, you're going to want to make sure that your thin snake has a thinner side and a thicker side, just so that you vary sizes of the peanuts. So what you're going to do is take a little bit of the thicker side, place them, and then a little bit of the thinner side and place them. All right, here's what it currently looks like. This took a really long time to do all the peanuts. I feel like I've either done not enough or I've done way too many, but let's roll with it and see what else we have to do. If you want to give the peanuts a roasted look, go ahead and take that chalk pastel, the dark yellow one, Ooh, okay. and lightly brush it on top of the peanuts. Um. I'm going to make them look toasted, so I need a darker yellow. So if I just run this brush over here and then lightly dust it on the peanuts. Ooh, too much. Take your rounded tool and push a hole inside the white part. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to make a little chocolate center inside. So now I'm going to go ahead and bake it for the final time and then come back and add that little chocolate center that she talked about with the paint. Right, so here it is all baked and cooled. Because I didn't secure the eye pin earlier, I'm just going to add some super glue now. Go ahead and put your brown paint in there. And then the only other thing I had to do was add the brown paint to the center for like the chocolate middle. So I'm just going to put some brown paint on a piece of paper here. And then I'm going to add the paint to my charm just using my dotting tool rather than a brush. All done! So now that my little ice cream charm is now all done, I'm going to go ahead and watch Jackie's tutorial with the visuals this time to see how I went and um, compare it to hers. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip ahead to where she starts the instructions just so I don't see any spoilers of what it's meant to look like at the start and then I can see what it's meant to look like right at the end. The okay. first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tan colored Okay, clay. she did use the darker tan clay. Really thin. And then you're going to take the side of any of the... Yes, I did use the right tool. I knew that's what she would mean. Usually they do have a texture. Roll it on top. Mm -hmm. Take your circle cutter. Uh -huh. 
Looking good so far. Yeah. Once you have that, you're going to take your dark yellow chalk pastel, put it on top, and then you're going to take your brown chalk. Okay, so hers doesn't show up as much either, which is good because I thought maybe with my shading I wasn't doing it dark enough, but that's okay. And then you're going to cut off the excess on top to make it flat. Oh, that's a good idea. See, I had the tool, but I put it in the cone, but then I took it out as I was cutting. I should have left the tool in and then cut around it. So, that's a good tip. Take the ice cream, what you're going to do is you're going to take a ball of white clay. Oh, she did put it in a ball. I put it in it. Okay, doesn't matter. Make sure that it's the right size for the cone that you have. Okay, so I did kind of work out the right size for it, which is good, comparing it to hers. Then once you have that bite, you're going to take your pointy tool again and make some lines. I'll see her bite looks a lot more realistic than mine. I used my cookie cutter for that and then yeah and hers is a lot more round on top of the cone. The ice cream part's more round. When I pictured a drumstick I pictured it more like um, like the flat top ones with more of like a cone kind of shape to them not the round one. See I like her ice cream a lot more. Yeah I should have textured it a bit more. So what you're going to do is take a little bit of the thicker side place them and then a little bit of a thing. Oh, I was going to say, a better way to do this would be to um, make a snake out of clay, bake it and then cut up the little chunks and just stick them straight on and that's what she's done in, she's written that in text. So that's what I would have done but I didn't realise that she had it in text but that's okay. Take your rounded tool and push a hole inside the white part. Oh, she just did one hole. See, I kind of did two, like, I kind of made two bite marks and then I made a hole on each side so it looks like there's two chocolate centers. Well, not two chocolate centers. I don't know. You know what I mean. Then Hopefully. Make a little crevice inside. Go ahead and put your brown paint in there. Oh, she used brown paint like me. Yep. And now the only thing and added it in. is to put your hook earrings onto the eye pins. And obviously I skipped the oh, earring part. Done. What is your favorite subject? And there you go. To be fair, I think that's you know, that's pretty good. And I had really high expectations to live up to because when Jackie followed mine with just the voiceover, she did a really good job of the donuts. Like, they look very similar. I mean, mine looks pretty similar, my little um, chocolate cone. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. But of course, it wasn't all just me. Jackie did a really good job with her video and her audio, making sure the instructions were nice and clear. And it makes you really, like doing these videos makes you really think about how important visuals are to a video. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to check out uh, Jackie's channel. I'll leave her links down in the description box below. Also subscribe to my channel while you're here for more crafty videos. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.